Well, 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 hello there. Welcome back, dear viewer. How are you doing today? Um, we're going to continue on the channel here today with our satisfactory, over-explained, let's play, beginner guide, research, tutorial thing, TM, that I've been doing for a little while here. Um, as always, we've done a bunch of off, off-stream, off off-camera again. I think you kind of have to once we get to this point in the game. Um, I think what, what episode is this? 16, right? So there's about 32 hours worth of episodes um, and we're up to about 70 hours played. So yeah, about half of my time has been off camera at this, this stage. But we kind of have to do it that way. Um, but we're back. Here's our lovely heavy modular frames factory we were in the middle of doing last time. I've given our train and train station a little, paint, uh, little coat of paint so he's all bright and nice looking. Um, but let's go and hop straight over and we'll have a look. You might spy over there, there's some, some other sort of weird train stations. We'll, go, we'll look at those in a little while. I want to talk about, I had to figure out some stuff to do with the signals. Um, so I'll talk about my findings when we do that. But this is all looking pretty good. Um, I think we linked everything up with pretty, pretty straightforwardly. There wasn't that much, it wasn't that complicated. I had to redo some of the uh, blueprint components. Um, but we're looking okay. We're looking okay. I think there is a slight issue in as much as like, I think these constructors right at the end here with these screws are not running at 100%. Yeah, these ones are only running at about 50. These last two, I think. Yeah. So I'm not really sure why that's happening. This one's on 100. So all the others are on 100%. Oh no, there's one yellow down there. Why is he yellow? Maybe he can't output. Let's have a quick look. So something's happening here where, yeah, he can't output enough. So at some point, I think I need to come back and look at this and figure, probably back, try and balance it. Because we did, I didn't really think it through. I just sort of did this higgledy piggledy stuff where I'm just sort of sending the screws everywhere. But I think some of these, look, this side is getting loads more screws than the other side. So I think this may be a case to re rebalance some of this. And I haven't, I haven't set it up properly, but well, I can tinker with that another time um what's well, a bit too it's a bit too tedious for today's episode i think let's have a look at this though so he's running about oh it's just ticking up so he's running about 90 percent we're making our heavy modular frames at a pretty good pace um how many have we got oh look at that we've got a lovely big stockpile at the moment so i could go and unlock this uh this blueprints thing up here why's my little oh no my little highlighter oh no there he is he just takes the shortcut for him is a uh, double control double tap control and it doesn't always work for some reason but there he is so i was hoping to unlock the blueprint mark twos so we might do that a bit later on we'll see um but for now and in fact what i should do while i'm just thinking about it we need to put a dimensional depot on top of here don't we really let's get one on there yeah that started so at least i've got some uh, heavy mod frames just in my back pocket ready to go so this guy was all good i did do some off stream like i said um but all we really did was i belted up all of this stuff and just sort of hung around and waited for everything to sort of load balance and fill out uh, since everything's manifolded um, and it's going pretty well but then what i did do was uh start doing some uh some tinkering with my power because i thought i'd try the old uh, whatchamacallit, why is my brain playing a blank this morning? It's too early. Turbo fuel, it's right there on my to-do list. So I unlocked the, t t uh, the turbo fuel in the map. And I'm hoping we can see the train coming along in a minute. But he doesn't seem to be. It's a little bit annoying. Um, but this is a long way to run as well. I wonder, uh, maybe I should have gone a different way. Hang on, hang on. Let's go back. We'll do this slightly differently. Um, or we'll come back and look at these little trains. I've set up a nice little thing for us to do. Uh, an example of how the trains and signals work because um yeah i set up another train line to do the uh sulfur and coal needed for the turbo fuel um but they kept crashing of course because <laughs> there was a bit where they they uh, cross over in front of each other and yeah they didn't like that um thankfully a, a train crash in this is very easily rectified we'll uh, <laughs> we'll demo that soon enough but yeah i just want to get we'll hop into the, the cannon that's just by here and we'll fly over to where I've done some of the other stuff so we can he can see what we've got. And then once we've had a look at that, I think we need to I need to do a bit of work on the turbo fuel. We'll hook up another generator, but the turbo fuel is gonna be absolutely crazy. We've I've almost doubled my power just by doing uh, a couple of extra refineries. Like it's really good. Um, I think because normal fuel uses something like 20 units per minute and turbo fuel only uses seven per minute or seven and a half or something like that. So it's, uh, it's really efficient compared to, to normal fuel. Um, so what were we going to look at? Oh yeah, you can see just in the distance here, we've got a pink train station. 
Uh, but flying a bit slow, which always bugs me. See if we can drop down here. Get a fresh run up. So this one here is just, I just set up a nice quick little uh, train station with one little guy here. I do know that I need to increase the amount of coal and sulfur I'm sending though. So we might do that while I'm here. Because I think that's why, if we look at the power, you can see we've got these up and downs happening here. And I think that's because I'm not providing enough coal and sulfur uh, to carry on creating uh, turbo fuel. So it sort of start, start stopping a little bit there. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll update this to a Mark II. Because I think this is just on a normal node. So we should be getting 120 a minute out of him now. That's great. So let's just update these belts real quick as well. And hopefully the train will pop along in a minute and we can hop on it. And, um, oh, there's a little sneaky bit there, look. I hate when there's a tiny little bit like that. I should probably just redo it so I don't get full foul of that again. Who wants to fight? You. Get out of it, mate. Um, hopefully the train's due any second. Come on, where are you? No, he's miles away. Let's have a look at the map. Is that him there? Oh, we've just missed him. That's a pain. Right, okay. Well, let's go and um, maybe we'll run up the hill and we'll, we'll jump on our... We'll get in our other cannon. Um, I do want to get to where the sulfur is, actually. Maybe we can just hop through here to that. We need to upgrade the update the sulfur output as well. And then we'll go and have a look at the turbo fuel power station. Um, which was actually a lot easier to set up than I thought. Oh my god, there's a giant spider. Hello, mate. Well, you want some? Come on, then. Do not like those guys at all, but praise be, we have the assault rifle. Right. Oh, I just missed it. Come on, man. This, these slide jumps when they go wrong really irks me. <laughs> right, so it looks like our sulfur mine is just under here. So here's the sulfur mine. Nothing too special. Just set up another little miner here, just feeding into another train station. And if we go and look, I'll show you, well, you'll see, we'll go up to where the train lines uh, cross over each other. And you can see, it's just a minor problem where they just, I needed to get them to stop and give each give way to each other sort of thing, you know, like yield. Um, all right, so let's make this a Mark II as well. Bonk. So I definitely need these guys to come a bit faster as well. Okay, let's just double check. That looks like it's going at the right speed. Yes, it does. I'll just double check in. 120? Yeah, 120. That's what we like. That's what we like. So, if we just go up here real quick, you can see... Oh, I've left my towers here. All the towers. So, so this is where I ended up fiddling around with these uh, block signs and stuff, trying to figure out how it actually worked. Um, and I think the thing that I came a cropper on was I didn't take my own advice, and I did it just... I built all of this, and then I started trying to figure it out. Um, and it's hard because you can't see the rest of the track and see how it affects it. Um, and we'll look at my little demo scene in a minute to just explain that. But essentially what I've set up here is these little signals, uh, control, mean, well, it means only one train can come into this little junction at a time. So if there are other trains coming, they'll stop uh, until the other one's gone through. We'll just grab a ride on this guy real quick. And we'll pop up to the, the turbo fuel station next. We'll have a look at that. We'll try and get that a bit more balanced. Um, and just hook up one more, one more pie. Or should we do the, well, maybe we'll do the train since we're on the way there now. I think the turbo fuel can wait. Let's, uh, let's be optimal with our routing, shall we? Oh, here comes the other train going the other way. It is nice having the trains pootling about. It does feel like um, there's more uh, life to the place. It's quite nice. It is quite nice. Right, cool. So here's our little demo train station. So hopefully I can just very quickly and easily show you guys uh, what we've got. So we've just essentially, I've just got a bunch of stations. Look, if we zoom in here, so we've got like A, B, C, and D. That's these four, these four stations. We've got a pink train, we've got a green train. Um, if we have a look at the timetable, um, I think I've parked both, I've turned them on. They've both stopped self-driving, but what I'll do is I'll turn on self-driving for both of them. Path is invalid. What do you mean? 
I tested this stuff not long ago. Oh, there we go, they're going. Are they gonna crash straight away? That's what I wanted, just to show you how that happens. So that's obviously the kind of thing that's gonna happen if you don't use any stop signals. Uh, but fixing the crashes is actually really quite straightforward. All we need to do is you just run up and, and press the use button. Dunk, and he goes back on the track. He won't be back in auto drive mode, uh, but you might wanna just like move him back out of the way or something like that so he can finish what he's doing. Um, and then the same with this guy, we, although part of it fell in the water, you don't need to worry about that. Um, they don't actually even lose their, their goods. If they were carrying stuff, nothing bad happens. It just stops it essentially, and you need to come and fix it. Um, so what we'll do, let's park this one right back on his, um, in his station for a second. So what we'll do now is we'll just start doing some stop signals. Um, I couldn't work out, you get two different types of signal, right? And I couldn't work out what the other one does yet. Um, but So we, we won't worry about that for now. But I definitely feel like I've got a good enough rudimentary understanding of this now, just from tinkering with it myself. But I do recommend if you're gonna do this, you should do it in a situation like this. Build out a nice, you know, a nice flat area where you can just put all the stations and track quite close together. And then you can see how how it works. So if we go into our build menu, right, we'll go and look at, so we've got block signal and path signal. If we look at the description for this, you can see, so directs the movement of trains to avoid collisions. Block signals can be placed on railways to create blocks. When a train is occupying one of these block blocks, other trains will be unable to enter, fine. Uh, signals are directional, so trains are unable to move against this direction, so to be sure to set up signals in both directions for bi-directional railways. So what this means, right, and let's select it, is when I put one of these down, it has to be on the right hand side of the train, I think. And you can tell which side that is because the side facing the train will have two lights on it and the, the one away from it will have a single square sort of uh, start signal on it. So the train is gonna look at the right, the, the two circles. You can just about see it there on that red hologram. So if I pop one of these here, that's all well and good. But what this now means is that no trains can come into this station is they'll need a signal on the opposite side. So that's what the sign, the tip was trying to tell us. Um, so if we plop this one here, what you can see now is we've made, we've made a different section. If you look, the, the colors of the track have changed. So I'm gonna delete it actually. We'll just, and I'll, maybe I'll try and explain that in a slightly different way. So what you use these block signals for, I think, is we use them to just create a place where we wanna tell a train to stop if another train is inside that section, right? So for me, that's like this crisscross pan. So we want to set up some signals probably on each of these lines where they can enter this cross crossing bit um, in little pairs to just mean that this becomes its own section. And you can tell that by the fact that it changes color, right? So if I put this one here, we'll put one on the opposite side of the track as well. Uh, the positioning's a little bit fiddly. I don't really understand how it works. When you're in free mode like this, it locks, I think, to where you've got segments of track. So where there's already, hang on, if we copy the track, can you see I've got one section here, one section here. So by default, it uh, snaps to those parts. But when you're like this, it goes either way and you can use the mouse wheel to rotate when it's like this. But when it's on an edge like this, the mouse wheel doesn't do anything. You just have to very gently move it either side of that join and it switches the side. Does that make sense? It's quite hard, you have to play with it. You'll, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. But we can see here now, if we look, this side where this pink train is sat is a red track, and then the rest of the track is all orange, right? So what this means now is this is one block, and then the rest is all considered as one block as well. So at the moment, this tra train would not be able to ever enter this orange section because this green train is already in the orange section. So we wanna make sure we make plenty of different sections to make sure that, uh, that the, the, the trains can move as free flowing as possible. So what I'm going to do is probably put this, we'll put this one as close as we can to the junk, to the crisscross, I think. So I'm gonna put one here and one here. And now you can see the track that the green train is on has changed to yellow. So that's another block that's been created there. We'll do the same thing over here for this station. So there we go, we've got another sort of, not a very different color, but it is a different sort of lime green sort of color here. That's another block. And then we've got this red block in the middle. So now if I just plop one more set of signals here, there we go. Oh, he's changed to really bright green now. Um, but then we've got another yellow one over here. So now we can see, look, we've got an orange one, a red one, uh, a yellow one here, a green one here, and another yellow one here. And if you look in the distance, you can see the, the other tracks have got sort of purple and orange as well. But now we've got several sections. Um, 
and this should now resolve all of the issues. Like I said, I haven't played with this path signal. Um, let's just read the description and see if we can guess what that means. Um, path signals are advanced signals that are especially useful for bi-directional railways and complex intersections. We haven't got any complex intersections yet. So, um, so maybe that's why I haven't figured out why they're useful. But they function similar to block signals, but rather than occupying the entire block, trains can reserve a specific path through it and will only enter the block if their path allows them to fully pass through. So I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, I think that might be a, for a scenario where you've got many parallel tracks and they all crisscross, you know, when you've got like a big station with lots of uh, opportunities to merge and branch off in different directions. So maybe in time I'll figure out what that does. But for now, I feel like I've got a really good handle on at least the basics. Um, and I've made a successful train that can go around, got a pair of trains that don't crash into each other. And that was my, <laughs> that was my main goal. So if I turn on self-driving for this guy now, and turn on self-driving for this guy, we should see them start to move. So there we go. We just saw this light change. So the moment he's got the green and now it's on red so it'll change so essentially what happens is you know they they're getting traffic lights when someone's inside this crisscross all of the outside ones will turn to red to make sure that no train can come in um, and that's essentially it and they're going to just keep doing that back and forth now forever which is pretty cool pretty cool um so yeah there we go that's it it was quite quite straightforward in the end i thought um it did take me a while like because like i said i was uh, investigating it on the on the intersection up there so i couldn't really tell why it was telling me the path was invalid or it was looping on itself it gives you some really quite unhelpful messages when it's not working um but i got there in the end so i'm quite pleased with that let's just turn these guys off so they stop uh, sapping electricity uh, turn off and turn off. Oh, and I was talking about, I've just remembered, we were talking about uh, last time, I was trying to figure out how you do the, uh, what I'm gonna do is just build myself a little train here and we'll just ride this down to the next station. What was that giant blob in front of us? It must've been like the uh, light cone, <laughs> weird. Um, but yeah, I was talking about ways to make the trains drop specific cargo and stuff at different stations i found it it was very very hard to find but i did want to find it because i had a particularly strange um problem with my trains how can i show this i did i actually did a little bit of a pirate software thor moment and drew it out in paint so i could try and figure out what was going on um but what i wanted to make sure we'll have a look at that in a second we'll, ch we'll chat about it i think it'll be quite a good little uh I like talking about the process, like figuring how I figure things out. It's like, that's the, you know, you can figure this stuff out. That's what I love about it. I like not looking at the internet. I like just having a puzzle and, and solving it. But the problem I was getting was I wanted to make sure that the trains that arrive here were, um, hey, delete. Hey, he's going too far away, I think. Um, excuse me. There we go. So what I wanted to make sure was that the train when it arrived here was fully emptying before it went off. And the reason for that is because I was relying on it to be um, empty when it returned. So I'm trying to think how I can explain it. Maybe we'll just, I'll just redo the, the drawing. Let's just do that real quick. So um, how can I do that? Let's get paint. Now, what's happened? That's not what I wanted to do. Why are we getting the black screen thing again? Is it not on borderless? Oh, it keeps changing back to full screen by itself. I'm sure it does. Apologies for that, dear viewer. Give it a second. There we go. Um, right, but I should be able to get paint up. Let's have a look at this. Right, so now let's let's do it proper thaw mode. We'll make it we'll make it black to start. So essentially, I've got a bunch of stations. Right, so we've got a train line. We've got a station here. Uh, this is where our coal comes from. That's like, oh, we've got another station here. This is where the sulfur comes from. And then we've got our destination station, which is, uh, we'll just call this the drop-off, right? So, and my train is configured in a, in a particular way, right? Like, so it's got, it's got an engine at the front. It's got an engine at the back. And then it's got two cargo holds. And one of those I want to have coal. And the other one I want to carry sulfur. So... From this station, my train, how can I draw this without it looking terrible? So let's do the train. We'll do the train in green, right? Trains are green. 
uh, we'll do we'll do the silver guy in yellow and we'll leave the coal guy in a sort of uh, black or grey colour, right? So, I had my train here. And when he's at this station, he fills up with coal at the front. Um, and then the sulfur one would be empty at this point, right? So we'll just draw him in white for now. So this is where the sulfur would be, but it'd be empty. And then my train line itself sort of goes in this direction, comes like this, then it goes like this, and he comes here, and then he just comes back in a straight line to here. So what happens is, if, if we look at this, you can imagine already, this train, when it arrives at the next stop, the, uh, the other carriage is at the front, the empty one, um, is the first slot, so he fills up with sulphur. The coal is behind that. And then we've got another carriage at the rear. And then they come over to this way, and then again, the, the positions are flipped, so that the coal is then at the front when we get over to this side. So let's just draw that real quick. So here's our coal, and that gets unloaded, and then the sulphur gets unloaded. Now the only problem with this then is that the train goes back and the sulphur carriage is at the front when it arrives here. So if it hasn't fully unloaded, uh, you end up with a mixed carriage that had coal and sulphur in it. And that was causing me all sorts of problems, and it was messing up my, uh, messing up my, what should we call it, my assemblers here who were making my compacted coal. Because these belts would end up mixed, and that was not good. Um, and of course, I could have just fixed it by probably just having like one carriage that had mixed stuff, um, and then using a smart splitter. Um, but I wanted to fix it in a different way because I'm a bit annoying like that. So what I ended up figuring out, here he comes right now. Actually, I'm quite interested to see how much stuff he's carrying. Okay, one line of that and one line of that. Oh, that's pretty good. That's probably enough. Um, so what I wanted to figure out is how I tell the train to stay in the station until it empties. So this god, god, guys, I'm not going to... This is one of those UI things again. It's just... Now I know where it is, it's fine, but jeez i was looking at these screens like how do i tell you know i was thinking can i tell this station can i somehow say there's no options here there's no right click i can't click on the map can't do anything like that i was like clicking on the train i was like how do i do this there's no other buttons here i was like can i click on this here this you know this there's, there's nothing it's actually you have to do it here and for some reason the button only appears when i highlight this thing jesus those buttons should always be visible, man. I don't know why they're not. Insanely poor UI. Like, but anyway, you click on this little cog here, and then what this lets you do is it shows you this screen. So this screen lets you say what you want it to load or unload, which is quite cool. It lets you do mixed trains without having to use a smart split. So that is pretty cool. I didn't even realize you could do that. So that is kind of interesting. And then the other thing you can do is you can choose this option. So one unload load has been is the default it was set to that so i changed it to be freight wagon is fully unloaded um, and then the default was or for this so i changed that to be and so now it's definitely it's always going to do this um it's this wait for 15 seconds is by the by it doesn't really matter but if this was on or you see it's either going to wait for 15 seconds or do this so either way it might not fully unload so i wanted to make it and i'm going to make sure it's fully unloaded um, and then that way now my trains when they when when he comes here he's always going to make wait he's going to wait here until he can dump all of his stuff into these boxes and i'm happy with that because i need to make sure that these boxes are full at all times because this is going to be uh you know doing my fuel and we want this to be nice and stable we don't want any instability with our fuel so there we go that was a good little story wasn't it i, I enjoyed figuring that stuff out it was really cool so now we're here and this is my giant um this is the beginnings of my turbo fuel factory so I've only powered up a, th a few of these at the moment. Um, it took me a while to sort of settle on how I was going to build this. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, and I'm not really... The fu fluid dynamics were really annoying me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But um, it's kind of settled, and it's, it's doing okay. So what we've got as a general setup, I figured out that I can use one assembler like this, I've overclogged him very slightly. Um, we're not going to go, well, maybe we will look at the numbers in a second. But essentially, we've got one assembler making exactly the right amount of compacted coal uh, for, for these um, refineries. So what I've got is, there's a pure oil node in the center of all this. He's pumping out some fuel, which comes into these guys. So these guys are just producing fuel at the normal sort of rate. Uh, that we're dumping some polymer resin out of that as a result. And then that fuel, he's making 40 fuel a minute these turbo fuel uh 
refineries need 20. So that the fuel refinery can make enough fuel for two turbo fuel refineries. Um, and then he needs this uh, 13 point three 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 um compacted coal to to do that oh god no i didn't mean to do that jesus what was it 88.888 it's a very satisfying uh, ratio that is so these guys then are using exactly all of the fuel that one refinery is creating that's making a 16.6667 uh turbo fuel a minute well times two so we've got about 33 uh turbo fuel coming out that's been fed out here and then so each a uh, pair of um, turbo fuel refineries is, has got a pair, a matching pair of fuel generators at the moment. And it looks like actually, um, this is actually balanced out again now. So hopefully it was just a little blip with the supply and that seems to have been resolved now. But I think if you remember yesterday, we were on 5.5 five and now we're up to 8.8, eight, which is pretty great going, pretty great going. So um, what I might do just for the fun of it now. So we've got, what well, we've got a production of 120 coal and 120 sulfur coming. These guys, these assemblers, I'm probably gonna have to double these up at some point. I've got enough oil out of that. I can have enough oil out of that oil uh, node we've got over there to do 10 uh, fuel plants. So this is gonna be massive. I'm gonna work on this between episodes and fully implement it. I think it's gonna be great. We're gonna have so much power and we haven't even got to the next stage. I did nuclear before, but like, whew, this is this is seriously cool. Um, I haven't even thought about using like, I know there's like diluted fuel recipes and stuff, but that, like make your fuel go even further. But for now, this is perfect. This is great. So these guys are using almost 30, right? So I can probably switch on one more of these to use all of that 120 uh, sulfur and coal we've got. So let's uh, let's hook this up right now. We should have plenty of materials coming in. So let's just quickly uh, set up one more. So I think he goes there. And then I put another one like this. We'll connect this up with a nice fast conveyor and that one and then we'll just stick a little conveyor lift there. This guy isn't powered yet, so we'll power him up. We'll just copy the recipe from that one, paste it in here, make sure it's the same. That looks good to me. Just need to make sure we join the coal. Right, there we go. So that's gonna be producing more uh, compacted coal for us. And at the moment, that's just being fed in this this direction. We're just splitting it. It's quite a simple sort of setup. Let me just see though, how much compacted coal are we making altogether? So now, yeah, we're making about just shy of 120 compacted coal a minute. We've already got Mark II belts out here everywhere. Oh Christ, I haven't joined this up. How has that been running all right? <laughs> Who knows? We'll, uh, we'll take it though for now, it's fine. Let's just do this. Now we should definitely have enough compacted coal. How is the power not still blipping if there wasn't, if all the compacted coal wasn't coming through? That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, must have just been a fluke slash coincidence. Not going to think about it too much. Um, and there we go. We should have now enough. We've got one extra assembler making compacted coal. So that's great. These guys just need to saturate. What I might do just to help them do that, I'll grab a stack we grab a stack of this, a couple of stacks of that actually, a couple of stacks of this. We'll just gotta make sure that these last two are fully saturated. That's probably the most important ones to get. Oh, he's nearly there already, look. There we go. You're saturated now. Oh, you're already saturated. Oh, great, okay, I won't do that. Let's put this stuff back in here then. Oh, train's back again. Good work, Choo Choo. So hopefully, I mean, these boxes are pretty full. It's a bit annoying you can't look at them while they fill up and do this animation. It's, I don't understand why that's so hard. Maybe there were bugs with it and that's why they stopped it. Um, but anywho, so we've made our compacted coal. He's shuffling along nicely to serve, to filter into our um, power plants. So what we're gonna do is, let's do this nice and slow. What I found when I was doing this was I, so because I wasn't sure how much power this was going to take all of this extra stuff, I didn't want to just turn everything on at once. So I've done them one at a time so far, and that's kind of worked quite well. Getting this fuel to work this way, like I've done it like underneath, um, I had some bizarre stuff happening. It's kind of just stopped on its own now. I don't know what it was, but I was looking at this. 
So this one's all right. This one generally sort of stays at this level. Um, a bunch gets sucked out and then it sort of fills up. And you can see it's sort of going up and down like this and that's fine. Over here, how's this one? This one's okay, but for ages, this one was just empty. And I didn't understand why. It was getting a very, very tiny bit, but never enough for this to actually start producing. Um, and I'm not sure why that was happening. So it's kind of, looks like it's kind of just stuck at this 16 level, but that's fine. As long as it's going 100%, I don't mind. But I tried all sorts of stuff. I put like a pump here to help it, but putting a pump here made all the rest of this pipe empty. It was really bizarre, the sort of stuff that was starting to happen. Um, but anyway, let's hook one up and we'll do it nice and slow. And hopefully we'll try and wait for the pipes to fill up at each part of the process, because I think that does help. So if we run out of here, this is where our oil is being funneled at the moment. So we've got, this is gonna just feed all of these eventually. Um, at the moment, I think he's on 240, is he? Yeah, so 240 is being cr cr created. Each one of these is sucking up 60. So at the moment, uh, we've got, I think we've got enough to just do one more for now. So this will be the last one we can do before we start overclocking that uh, um, oil extractor. So if we plop this into here, this is immediately full, thank goodness. So we just need to hook this guy up with some power, which we can do around the other side. So let's hook him up like so. Um, and then we need to make sure we just join him on to this sink line here to make sure we're getting rid of um, any nasty, what's it called, polymer resin. So we'll plop a merger on there, use this max, well it's not, it's a Mark III belt, it's probably overkill, but once we've got more in here, well I don't know, I think I'll do another sink the other side for the other ones once we once we get to that point. So here we go, he's producing now nicely, so he should start be starting to fill up with fuel. Yeah, he's got 20 there, that's perfect. So then what I need to do is connect these up to these guys. So well, the way I'm doing that is I just do a nice little pipe all the way along here. Try and make it straight. That would be a good idea. So I connect him there. Let that pipe. Because there's definitely some... It's almost like... I don't know how to explain it, but it feels like, you know, if this... If the fuel can't leave here, you get a number here, like this starts to fill up. It's almost like each section of pipe can hold a volume as well, right? Um, but I'm not sure how big each section of pipe that holds volume is. It's a bit tricky to understand. But generally... I think once we've got some, some spare going, it seems to be okay. Let's see if we can pop a couple of these down. We'll pop one there for the input to that uh, refinery. It's all a bit tight for running through here. Kind of wish I'd left a bit more space. It does get a bit fiddly. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll connect these guys up. Why is that not working? Noodle? Noodle works fine. And we'll noodle this one. And then this bit can be quite tricky as well. So if we get one of these, getting him to line up like this is quite hard. But generally, I haven't had much trouble connecting. It's not as finicky as um, conveyor belts when they're sort of very close and not quite lined up. It does seem to just work. So if we look at this now, this is the point where I, I kind of just need to wait, I think, because I feel like if we look at this, where is all this liquid going? I'm guessing what's happening is it's just sort of sloshing around and like filling all of this pipe sort of equally. That's what it seems to do. So we need to wait a little while now for this pipe to kind of fill up before this thing will start to fill up. That's what I want to do is just give this pipe a little time so he can do that. While we're waiting, we'll make sure that this guy has also got um, his compacted coal coming in. So let's do that in the same way I've done the others. I think that's enough speed, because let's think about it. We've got 120 being made. This, uh, yeah, this is 120 belt, but it doesn't need to be yet, I don't think. But that's fine, because each of these needs how much again? So let's just call it 15 to be a quarter of 60. So yeah, we've got four on here, so a, a 60 a minute belt is definitely fast enough. And these guys are carrying on. We've got the compacted coal coming in here. That's cool. Is this starting to fill up yet? Just very slightly, look. So that's fine. Let's see, is this, so he's nice and full now. Is this full all the way along? Is that how it seems to work? Yeah. So there's something like that is definitely 
going on here? Okay, that one's nice and full. How's this one looking? See, why is this one not filling up? I don't get it, lads. I really don't get it. Oh, what the heck? Right before our eyes. <laughs> and now it's emptying again. Why is that? I don't understand. This thing hasn't even got a recipe or power yet. What is going on? It's very strange. <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> and it's like, you know, when you're doing something with power, you need it to be reliable, right? Like, I can't have it behave really erratically, or not, at least in a way that I don't understand. I'm sure I could go and read it up on the internet, but I kind of like just mucking, mucking about with it and trying to figure it out. So this one is looking okay now. He's got a nice full pipe on the outside. So hopefully we can now power this one up. That's the best way to do that. We go up here, we should have some power set up at the front. Right, we'll extend him a little bit, plop him there. What I might do is just power this one up as well. So that's ready to go. But this guy should now be producing, so that's cool. Um, let's get the other one producing real quick as well. If I just run back down underneath, we'll connect the second pipe. And hopefully, it won't go without too many issues. How's this pipe looking now? It's looking a lot more empty. Well, that's fine. We have just built another section of pipe that needs to fill and it's not to actually consume the, uh, the, the oil, the fuel, right? So, right, what else do we need here? We need another one of these. Make sure this guy can get some compacted coal. So we'll join that up. So that should sort him out. Has he got a recipe? No, he hasn't. Oh no, what have I just done? That's yeah, fine. Uh, let's paste that one in there. Okay, so that's cool. He's powered up. He should start once the fuel starts coming in. One thing I did experiment with as well was like I just turned some of them off. So maybe we'll just turn this on and off a minute. I'll come back and turn him on in a sec. But I am conscious that we need to now get the underneath, uh, the exit, sorry, the output sorted. It gets very dark at, at this part of the map as well. I'm not enjoying how dark it gets. Um, so if we connect that like that, I've been doing them sort of sideways just to keep the pipes nice and sort of separated. It's, uh, it does get a bit tricky. I'm regretting how close together I've put everything, not going to lie. So much so, I think that's the second time I've said that. Right, but there we go. Now we can do the output. So this bit is a right mess. Again, I wish I'd given more headroom here. I left four metres, but it's not enough when you're dealing with pipes. Um, so... You can see we've got sort of the red pipes of the turbo fuel coming out. So what we're going to do is just drop this guy down like this. Plop him about here. Or we'll drag him all the way down here. I've been, what I've been doing is just sort of, I don't want to join him there. I just want to clip him through here a little bit like that. Because what we need to do as well is there's a second one. That's now, which is, this is where our other one uh, exits. So I just need to try and do like we did before. Get this guy lined up like this. And then hopefully I can join these two up without much hassle. I can delete this bit at the end. And then we're gonna have to have another segment here. This is a tricky thing to do as well, especially when it's this dark. Jesus. Um, if we I jump and crouch, you can just about get on top, which is kind of useful. Um, and then let's copy one of these try and get it it's so hard to see what you're doing right hold that there oh right i can see what's going on so we want that about that way hard to tell if it's in line not quite no so hopefully about here looks good let's just do it and hope for the best okay i think we got away with that that's cool. So we should start be able to see some turbo fuel coming through. So that's cool. Looking real good. Um, and we'll need to go and build another couple of power stations in a second just to top that off. What I want to just check quick is now, let's have a look at uh, this guy. So he's full of fuel, which is excellent. We need to turn the other one on now then, so he can start sucking up some of that spare fuel we've got. And it doesn't hold up the fuel production on this guy. So he's still running 100%, so that's nice. Okay, that's good. That's good. Is this guy now running 100%? 94%. 
What's he short on? Compacted coal? Why is that? He should definitely have enough compacted coal coming through. Interesting. Yeah, that belt's looking pretty full. Look at it. Got a few little gaps coming through, but we'd expect that. It's not going to quite make it. We're not quite making 60. We're making something like 54-ish. So, yeah, that's, that's fine. But an almost full belt is what I'd expect. And then hopefully we're distributing it nice and evenly. Um, so hopefully this guy should be running closer to 100%. He's getting there. He's ticking up. Not quite getting the compacted coal for some reason. It's very close to getting it. And hopefully that's just going to be a case of it balancing itself out soon enough. And this guy at the front, how are you doing? Well, you're alright. You got you got you got compacted coal spare. So it's very peculiar how these things sort of balance out. It's not ticking up that fast. Well, he's got 10. Let's see, is he going to have 12 again by the time he's finished this cycle? 11. Go on. Just in time. Okay, so that's fine. He's doing... Well, it wasn't quite just in time. But hopefully, that's going to that's gonna sort itself out. Wait a second. What have I done here? How did I do that? <laughs> How did I do that without noticing? Too busy chatting, clearly. Right, let's go and have... <laughs> right, everything looks to be in order otherwise. So we'll just have to leave this and hope for the best for a bit now. Uh, let's add another couple of power stations. This, this, this is going to get huge. This is going to get real huge. Because these guys are already overclocked. So I've overclocked them to 222.222, which is very satisfying again. Which means they're using exactly uh, the 16.6 uh, turbo fuel each one of these refineries is making. So let's add another two to the end. I'm worried that some of the fluid dynamics are going to screw me over eventually, but I'll deal with that when it happens, I think. So we just do another few blocks of foundations. We should have enough room to just add these guys in. One there. And one there. Oh, what's happened here? Hang on. Let's delete that. Let's do the crisscrossy bit first. There you go there. Then we'll connect it. There we go. This works a bit better. That way around. Right, cool. And then we just need... Well, we'll just give these guys a minute. So this is another thing I like to wait to do, now that I've tinkered with these a little bit, is if we wait for a while, these will fill up with fuel. Um, or at least get a, a little bit of a backlog of fuel in them. If we look at these, how many of these got spare? Yeah, they've only got a little bit. Oh, he's right full. As is that one, but that's okay. So I'll let them just get a tiny bit of a uh, tiny bit of backlog, just so they've got some spare. If we hit any hiccups in production, yeah. Look, we've got this guy's not producing now. Why are you not producing compacted coal again? Yeah. Why is the compacted coal not producing fast enough? It should be making exactly the right amount, I think. Um, so we need thirteen point three 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 times four, right? So let's just just just, just double check this. Oops. Uh, times four. 53.333 we should be making. So we go and look at these. Are these guys working at 100%? Yeah, they're working at 100%. Wait a second. Oh my god, what's going on here now? Let me think about this. Have I got to... So if he's making 26 point... We're making more than enough. Like, two of these is enough. Why is my math so bad? Let me just double check this again. Oh no, wait, because I've got, I've got eight of these. Dude. Right, let's try that again then. So the sum isn't... It's not times four, it's times eight. So we should be making 106. And if I divide that by four, that's 26.666. Right, so that's what each of these is making. So we are sort of on track for that, for sure. He's running at 100%. You're running at 100%. So 
So they're definitely all running at full tilt. Oh, okay. Oh, you can control Z. Didn't know that. And yeah, it's 106, so a Mark II belt should be fast enough. But all of it, let's just check. Yeah, that's a Mark II. That's a Mark II. I'm really not sure why it's... The only thing I can think is it's just the, the manifold problem of all, of all of all time. So what we might do, has he got spares? He has. I'm going to steal the spear out of him. And I steal the spear out of this guy because he should be full as well. And this guy. We'll just mess with it a minute. And what we'll do, because those guys will fill up quickest again. So we'll just let them fill back up. I'll uh, pre-manually or manually saturate these ones further down the lines and hopefully that'll help them out we'll have to wait and see that it's always a bit tricky this stuff you just got to give it time i think to balance itself out right uh so my pockets split that in two we'll give you half oh no wait not half wait have i done that right i don't think i have done that right wait a second come here who did I steal all the, the coal for the coal? Oh god, there's so many refineries. Right, he's saturated now, so that's fine. You're saturated. We need these other two over here to be saturated too. They're not going to be quite as saturated. Oh wait, he's already saturated, so I did do him. That's fine. Did I do you as well? Yes, I did. How are you looking? Pretty poor. So, we'll give you a bunch. We'll give you a bunch. Oh, you've already got 21. So that's fine. How are you looking? Yeah, you're on the bow the same, so we'll give you 20. I'll give you a little bit more. I'll give you a little bit more. Right, there we go. Now, hopefully, these guys should sort of smooth out now. And we should have a nice bit of power coming our way. Let's, uh... So, I think... Oh, they're nearly full now, so let's... Oh, wait. They were on. They're just not um, connected to the grid. So let's sort that out. Alright, and did I overclock them? No, I did not. What do we need to do again? Yeah, two, two, twos. All the twos. So we'll fill him with those. I am chewing, starting to chew through <laughs> these, uh, these power shards for sure. But that's him done. Oh, we're getting so much power out of each generator. It's amazing. I'm really... It's really quite satisfying. So there we go. Capacity 10k. Oof. Smashing it. Okay, so what are we going to do next? I think... Sorry, just having a slurp of drink. I think now we can return to our... Um, Heavy Mod Frames Factory... And we'll go and try and get our last two, last two phase uh, quest items producing. Um, and hopefully it will be a little bit quicker than what we were doing last time because we've done the bulk of it. That heavy modular frame factory was a, an absolute beast. Um, so let's go and see if we can get our other two bits and pieces up and running. I think the first one we'll go for will be the. Um, Adaptive control units. They should be relatively straightforward. Should. I haven't thought it through in loads of detail, but it should be fine. We should be able to just uh, bring some stuff together into a manufacturer and not think too hard about it. I'm hoping anyway. So here's where we wanted to start doing that. Let's park here. Bonk. Um, so what did we need? Again, let's remind ourselves. We've got the automated wiring, we've got the circuit boards, we've got the heavy modular frames. Great. Okay, so let's let's think. So we've got the heavy mod frames down there. We will uh, ferry them up, probably on a conveyor belt. I, oh, excuse me. I did think about doing it with a car. We did talk about that. And we put a truck stop there, but at the same time, it's just so much hassle. I don't ever want to use tractors again. Not going to lie. They're pretty rubbish, I think. Um, they can have some good use cases. They were quite good on some of my other maps, I think. Especially if you're going for very sort of spread out stuff. 
Uh, but in this sort of scenario, I haven't I haven't done enough forward planning for it. Um, I haven't made a proper road network that's going to support it properly. And I think you need to do much better um, truck stops that have a good place they can pull in and maybe rejoin and turn around. So I'm just, yeah, we're going to sack that idea off, I think, for today. So what I do want to do, though, is start thinking about this. So we're going to have our manufacturer is going to make our delicious... Um, what are they called? What are they called again? Let's do a, let's do a, one of these guys because they look a bit more impressive. So here's our um, manufacturer. We'll plop him down here. So, and he's going to need to be fed just a few things. One of the things he's going to need to be fed is oh, I still haven't fixed this one bit that doesn't work. It's funny, actually, looking at it, I can tell it doesn't work because it's quite hard. Maybe it's hard for to see on the video, but he's a lot lower down than these ones. These ones seem to be in a different position. Oh, actually, no, that one at the end looks the same. Oh, I don't know. I don't blame him. Blame him no, let's just delete it because I know it doesn't work. It's not making the noise. Why is it not? Huh. Well... Now I'm suspicious that that's not going to work either, but we'll see. Let's, um, so we've got... So what is this here? A smart splitter. So what I really want to do is we're going to just change this. Let's go uh, any on this output as well. And I did up the production of this as well. Oh yeah, there we go. I upped him to three per minute. And I can see now that he's really caught up on the cable. And he's actually running at 83%. So we're not quite making enough now. But that's fine. What we're going to do is... So what I'll do is we'll drop him back down to 2.5. Let's put him back on 100%. Just so he's back to normal. Um, and what we'll do is we will put... Um, I'm going to turn off the overflow to uh, the sink because we're never going to hit that I'll overflow to storage instead now and then any will just come straight over and feed our uh, what's it called again adaptive control units I'm going to make this look nice I always find these a bit tricky to do so it looks like we use that like that and uh, use those this is a long way, isn't it? I should have done it a bit closer, maybe. We plop this here. I'm kind of hoping that's the same height by default, is it? it? Kind of feels like it is. Let's just go like that and see what happens. Can I can I reach that from here? Negative. Let's do a couple of conveyor bowls. Just to help him along. This computer's being fed straight into our um, manufacturer, so that's good. We also need to do the same thing with um, circuit boards. I'm wondering whether I can make it look a bit tidier as well. Maybe we can just put the circuit boards underneath or something. Let's see, where are they? Where's the splitter for those? So, oh my golly. So that's our storage. And it's coming... Where does this go? So this is this the output? No, this is the circuits that are going in to make computers. So we still need them to do that. Is this a smart splitter? No, it's just a regular splitter, so that's nice. This is the output. This is the overflow splitter. I should have done the computers like this. This is a nicer way to do it. But anyway, let's... Um, we only need a few computers a minute. So I'm going to bring them over in this sort of fashion. Um, how can I make this look nice? What I really need is one of these, like, under here. So if I plop this about here, and hopefully I can just join it like that. How's that going to look? Ah, oh, not too shabby, that'll do. Um, so that's our circuit boards en route. 
Delicious. Um, and they're going to come into this one. So maybe for this, what do we need to do? I'd like to do... Let's see if we can make a, a shorter... I'd pop him there. Oh, it's not doing the thing. Why is it not doing the thing? Maybe it'll do the thing now. Yeah, now we got a nice stumpy little conveyor lift. I love the stumpy conveyor lifts. One of my favourites. Alright, so we've got a whole load of circuit boards coming now because we're way over producing those. So that's cool. Um, I'm going to just make a note for myself because what I'd like to do is um, increase computer production. We could do that in, in multiple ways. And actually, we've got so much... We've got so much power now, why don't I just go and just dump a Soma Sloop in it? Because I won't need any more input to do that. So, let's... I've got a Soma Sloop in here. So let's just see what that does to the power. Wow, I can put four. So, what I'm not clear on is how you put in just one at a time, like, in an easy way. Like, you, I know you can do it, but if I go like this, it'll just fill it with four straight away. So we just give it a second to finish this cycle, let's see. So it's 55 megawatts by default. Oh, I can take that out, because we don't need that. He's gonna make double the output now, which is amazing. Don't get me wrong. But how much is this gonna be? 160 or something? 220! Wowzers. Well, we got power to spare at the moment, so I don't really care. So maybe we'll just let it do that. Um, and we'll rinse through these. But what I wanted to demonstrate was like how the only way I've figured out how to do less is like you have to like split the stacks like this and then you can just do that look and now you get 1.5 sort of thing. We can do like that and get 1.5 times. So, and now it doesn't use quite as much power, you see? So, that's kind of cool. I think for now, we'll just let, let's just leave it on full and we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll sort it, we'll come back at a later time. Maybe I'll do it in a more stable way where we're just not using tons of power to do it. But there we go. We should get loads of computers coming, uh, into our production app, so that's great. The other part then, let's get the heavy modular frames coming up. Where am I going to do those? It's a bit tricky because I've got this stuff here, haven't I? So maybe we'll do it this side. I'm going to build something really quite uh, janky. I love building a janky conveyor lift. It's one, of my f it's one of life's little pleasures, isn't it? Definitely not an aesthetics person. Well, that's not true. I do like aesthetics, but I find them too fiddly and annoying to do in this game to bother with. So, um, this'll do, this'll do. This is almost perfect, actually. So, what I'm going to do next is we'll just drop this put it in vertical mode. Give ourselves a nice little thing like that. Um, and then another thing I like to do, just to make sure that we get a nice conveyor belt, Oh, actually, maybe we don't need to do that here. Let's see. Oftentimes I've put like, I do like this essentially, right? We put one more, oops. I put one more um, foundation like this and then put a conveyor hole in it and um, just to make sure it definitely goes up in one lift. But this is short enough that I think we should be fine. So, here's our stuff. We haven't done this in the best way yet. Because really what we want to do, maybe we feed this out the front. I think my, my storage should be fine. So let's, um, we're going to do it the lazy way. What I'd really recommend you do is you do this in a, um, in fact, maybe we should do it this way. So we'll delete this. This is my preferred way of doing this. Let's make sure. Because otherwise, like I said, I've had issues where these two things don't act like a splitter. Like, I thought they were just 50-50 split, but they don't always work like that for some... I think it's a bug, to be honest, right? So what we'll do is we'll put um, a smart splitter here. And this smart splitter is going to feed as a priority into our uh, storage. Our dimensional depot. Oh, it's not tall enough, Rob. Come on, mate. Try that again. Out there maybe All right, hopefully there we go so the default so that's going to be forwards it's going to be any 
and then we'll do left can be overflow and overflow is going to head off that direction into our uh, adaptive control unit factory and this one I wanted to change to a smart splitter because that's going to sink eventually but I'm, I don't think we're in any worry of that right now but I am going to add it as a note so I don't forget sync um, H mod frames right um, so okay that's cool so now we've got a little belt coming out to start taking this stuff up there just what I needed um, how do we make this look nice don't want it to go across the road too much so maybe we do uh, if we get ourselves conveyor poles and we'll keep it we'll keep it higher i think he needs to go about here it's completely winging it today we'll turn off straight mode we'll just do some old school diagonal conveyors this guy can be a straight mode though to there and then this bit's always a bit tricky because I want the conveyor lift to line up nicely so I think if I try it like this we'll do this bit first we'll do old school we'll get a ladder we haven't used a ladder in ages have we not since we've got that good fuel so now if we uh, start our lift like so we can go right up here and make sure it looks like it's the right height I think that should be perfect I do like hiding these sometimes because they look look at that it looks a bit janky doesn't it <laughs> but we move we're gonna live with it for today I think that's fine so we just need to connect this up let's go Oh no, have I just done that up in the air? Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> wait, 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 what's going on? Connect to there, please. Thank you. Okay, so for this guy, maybe we'll just... Oh, I should probably lift it up again, to be honest. Let's just snake him. You can just snake along this way, mate. Uh, maybe about there. And we'll just connect you like that. Right, cool. Look at that big line of heavy modular frames coming. I can see them. Delicious. You know, this isn't going to take us very long to make this stuff, you know. And uh, we should get absolutely crazy good tickets from it. So we'll just let it keep producing, I think. Uh, the one last piece of the puzzle that we need is a... We need to join up some... Uh, what are they called? Automated wirings. But I'm going to do that in an absolutely horrific lazy way like this. Because I don't care. Um, I might eventually make a conveyor belt up here. We'll see. See if it bothers me. Because um, I think... These adaptive control units do become an item you need in great, in extremely large quantities for later phases, of course, because that's how the game works. There's only two phases left, to be fair. And we've done, we've done, we're nearly, I'd say about 60% through the game. Um, so let's go and grab some of those um, automated wirings. I'll bring a whole stack with us. I think we can hop in this tube to be a little bit quicker. Whoop. All right, cool. Where was that? It was this one, wasn't it? Oh, look, the doggo's here again. Should we try it? Let's see if we can make him a friend. Where's my, where's my pale berries? Why am I whispering? Like you can hear me or something. Hey, Mr. Doggo, I got you a, I got you a little berry. Oh, he hasn't seen me. Can we just sneak up on him? Oh my God, you can pet him. No, come back. Hey, I didn't mean to. I wish you could have toggle crouch in this game because C is not my favorite key to hold while trying to also use WASD. 
No, oh, he's gone. We're gonna have to try and... I want to try and make a friend with one. Anyway, we're here. Oh, look at that, I can get nearly three entire rows worth of those. Let's do that, so I can get three entire rows. Sweet, I think that's almost an entire uh, standard storage box, isn't it? So that's cool. We've got loads of those. But yeah, I think this top uh, conveyor belt, what was that one even used for? Probably something else that we were bringing up here at some, at some point. Was it the automated control, uh, automated wiring? I was taking it up to the top at some point, maybe. But that belt has only got occasional uh, versatile frameworks on it at the moment. So we could just use a smart split, take it halfway up here, smart split it out to get it going where we want. Pretty doable. Pretty doable. But sweet. Here we go. Let's dump these in and hook it up with power. So this wasn't too big a build, was it? We just needed to make like one manufacturer, basically. Oh, look at that. It's still not even quite enough. I wonder if I can then. Um... So if we pick this, can I just put an extra stack in there just so that's done? Lovely. And we just need to give it some power now. Fantastic news. I love that we were so well stocked and ready to go. I am slightly regretting the fact that I should have done the same. I should have fed this from the computer storage. Um, yeah, I really need to think that through and think what's the most optimal way to do that. Anyway, this should be fine. Um, so we're going to need two computers a minute, which we've got. We've got two heavy modular frames a minute being made, so we need one, so that's perfect. I think we've got 15 circuit boards being made, so we've definitely got enough of that. Automated wiring. I can't even remember how much we're actually making a minute. Probably close to 2.5. It needs five per minute. So ideally, we would want to increase the automated wiring production. And I'd probably do that in a cheaty way with a server sloop at this point rather than build another factory. Um, so yeah, that's cool. I am going to add that to my notes though, just so I remember that I need to do it. Uh, what's it called again? Auto wire prod to five a min. So I remember that. Cool. Right, let's get ourselves some power. And then we're off. Where do these go? And this little middle, it looks like. Um, where's the power lines for this bit? Are they all around the back? Curses. Well, maybe we'll just do it like this. Uh, join there for now. Doesn't need to be anything fancy at all. Right, there we go. He should start to fill up with those. Beautiful. Our very first automated wire uh, adaptive control unit is being created. And I, for one, am very happy about it. So what we'll do here is a similar thing as we've done on our other ones. I'm going to just dump a box here. Where have we got? I haven't got a close by. Um... Oh, bugger. He's not in the right place. We haven't got a sink. There's a sink right behind the computer factory, so maybe we'll try and ferry them over that way. So I want a smart split here. We'll feed it this way. We'll say right output is any, left output is overflow. Actually, I'll change the center to be none, just to be safe. This thing is just going to feed into there. It's going to feed into there. Once I've got 100, I'm going to just uh, pick them up and take them up to the top. We won't bother doing a conveyor belt for this one, I don't think. So sweet, there we go. There's our first one. I just saw it. Come on. Oh, look how shiny it is. Exciting. Very exciting. Oh, look at all the circuitry inside. That's cool. Right, there we go. So yeah, there's a sink all the way over there. Look, I might just like... I don't know, put another sink behind this eventually. It's going to be a long time before this is full. So we'll just leave that for now and I'll uh, sink it. I'm going to actually, oops, add the note. Tap to control unit. Sweet. So there we go. Oh, I remember I need to sink those heavy mod frames and those control units. That's fine. Right. Um, so next then. I think we need to just do our factory for um, 
What you call it? What are they called again? Modular engines? Yes. So yeah, this is the one we're going to do next. And I think I want to build it up on top of that factory since we're already making uh, some of our stuff up there. So let's... The only challenge will be getting the rubber, I think, that we need for it up there. But um, that's, that's, that's a small fry. We'll figure that out. I think we might just do... We could just do a really lazy uh, and awful looking conveyor bridge again. I'm, I'm a fan of a conveyor bridge, so don't get me wrong. Whatever works, remember. That's that's what you're going to do. Whatever works. Just like the... Uh, it's the same as when you play Dark Souls. Whatever works. There's no right or wrong way. So I do enjoy these stairs. I haven't built many more stairs, actually. And I like what the, the railings look like on them as well. They're cool. But let's think about this. So if we go right up to the top. Ah, oh, my home. I do like how this base has turned out. It's very cute. I'm still enjoying the pink and green colour scheme after all this time. It's funny, I made all these little weapon factories and I barely used them. But it was very satisfying to get them set up. Right, so we're here. Let's get ourselves a tower and we'll start building it. So let me just try and actually, before we do that, let me think. So, what's this guy here, mate? Is this the smart plating guy? Yep. So there's our smart plating. It's literally just... <laughs> Just going straight into a sink at the moment. So that's cool. We've definitely got enough of that. Um, what else did we need for these modular engines? Motors. They're being made at the back. And you can see, look, there's a giant queue of them over here. Uh, just waiting to go into storage. So that's completely cool as well. We've got tons of them. Um... So we'll siphon that off. I think there's a sink already at the back, so we can probably just siphon it off at that, that point. And then, yeah, we'll just have to bring some rubber from way over there. So that bit is going to be tricky. Um, but let's move and start figuring this out. And hopefully we'll just have this all sorted out and everything will be ticking along nicely. For the next episode, maybe the next time will be the last one. Because uh, I think we'll have done everything. We'll definitely have completed this phase. We'll probably have a look at the next phase and chat about some of the tech in there that's quite exciting and cool, because there is a lot of cool, exciting tech in the next phase for sure. Um, all right. So first stop, let's make ourselves um, a manufacturer. And I'll point him in this direction, I think. There's going to be some clipping through the glass ceilings, but I don't really care about that at this point. I think I'm going to make him face this direction as well, because he can output straight towards where our space elevator is. So we'll hook this guy up to the space elevator for sure. There's more items as well, so it's less less faff for us to run back and forth to do. Um, so there he is. Let's go and set the recipe so he's ready. This is going to be another really straightforward one, though, because we don't need to do too much. Um, so I'm kind of happy about that. So he's set up like this. Great. Let's, um, where are we going to get power from? Don't worry about that at the end, I think. So first step, let's give him, um, an output. Why am I stuck on there? I couldn't get, it's very odd. Getting stuck on the edge of that. Um, let's try and give him a nice little path in this direction to the, What's this thing called again? Space elevator. So let's see, we had this guy coming in this direction. God, it feels like ages since I've been here. But this is cool. So if we put another one of these just next to here, like that, I think that should connect into there just fine. And then what I'd like to do, I think, is maybe... Actually, if we put this on top... Can I connect that out without it looking too trash? No, that's a bit crap. Um, hang on. Maybe we'll just do... If I do this here, can I now join that up without it looking too trash? That looks okay. That looks okay. And then if we join it to here... Then what we'll do is we'll put a, an elevator on there. And this is going to be proper cowboy. Like, I don't really care. We're at the point, lads, where I am just like, we need to finish this. 
Right, so that can go like that. That'll do. That'll do. Oh, it's actually looks quite tidy. So we've got a nice conveyor coming over here. That's going to feed down onto there. That's going to go into our space elevator. Great. We'll probably need to uh, consider sinks though as well for this. So in fact, let's add a smart splitter on here. So at least once, um, oh, that's a bit far away to go, but it doesn't matter. Uh, once we've done this, once we've completed the objective, we can just leave the production running and we'll uh, sync the rest. So um, let me just, well, maybe we can do those syncs in a minute. So let me add it to the notes now. And what are these calls again? Mod engines. That's cool. So we've got this smart splitter set up ready for that anyway. So nice. Let's just start getting our materials up here then. So where's my, here's our motors look. Oh yeah, look, I've already smartly done this. So we've got like a, a pair of smart splitters here. So I think my thinking was here that I can, this smart splitter is going to storage at the moment. Um, and it's got no other outputs. But we, what we can do see is then use this to f siphon some off. Um, to go to production and we can change it so that storage is the backup option and then once storage is full and the production is full then we go to this small splitter behind and we'll sync the road the motors so that's cool um let's add this side to be any this side can be overflow we need to have a really quite tall conveyor lift here no big deal we got the technology so you can go like that. I think we're just going to do this nice and simple. We'll just bring it right across the roof. There we go. And that's actually been quite satisfying. These last sort of things, that since we've been good and got other things set up quite nicely, it hasn't been too much to worry about. So there we go. We've got a, a load of motors coming our way. They're only going to come out at the rate that we're producing them, but that's absolutely fine, I think. Because we only need them at quite a low... In fact, let's have a look. How many am I producing? I can't even remember. How are we getting? I've put bloody glass everywhere. It looks nice, but it's inconvenient. Okay. Oh, he's not quite running at 100%. Interesting. The stators are not on time for some reason. Weird. But okay, that's fine. So we're doing four per minute. Uh, how much does this recipe need? Come on. Have a look. Um, oh, it only needs two. Beautiful. That's that's absolutely music to my ears. So we pop over this side. So we should have. We can do a similar thing here. So we delete this for a second, um, and then we'll get ourselves no a smart splitter. It's going to feed in this way. Where do I put this though? This thing doesn't look the best, does it? In fact, let's just change this real quick. This should be like that. So at least they join up tidily. Then... Smart Splitter can go here. Facing this direction. I will leave it so that right is overflow. So we should still be able to overflow, please. Where is that? I just saw a smart plate go in. Oh, maybe the holding area. Remember we've talked about that. It definitely seems to hold stock inside this. There's like a number of slots, it seems like. Uh, so maybe that stuff is just prioritised to, to go forward to production. That's fine. Let's um, get this conveyor lift up the right height. I uh, can't quite tell. It feels like there is right. Oh, not quite. But that's fine. I'll live with it. Oh, no, actually, it's going to bother me. I'm so terrible for this. If we leave that last conveyor there, at least that gives us the visual cue that, like... Oh, no, now it does that, though. I want you to ignore the snap, please. It's so annoying that I can't ignore snap, because now it's just going two clicks up. God damn it. Right, so it's a little bit higher than that. I'm trying to use that mountain in the background to help me aim it. Is it there? 
Yeah, baby, we got it. Okay, cool. Um, so this guy needs to join up real quick as well. What on earth is going on there? That's a bit better. And then, as always, we know that this thing doesn't connect for some reason, but it should do now. Okay, motors are looking good. They're looking good. We just need to get the rubber up here now. And this is going to be a big one. How the heck? So where is... Why is it so foggy up here? Turn the fog off for a minute. There we go. Oh, so nice with full draw distance. So our rubber's all the way over there. I can't even remember how much we're producing, so we better go and check that out too. Why is that not getting sunk? Oh, I need to check that out at some point. Right. Let's have a look. The popping is a lot more noticeable when you play with no fog on, but it's like being able to see properly. Right, so who's making rubber out of all these? I think it's only this one here. I think this is the only guy making rubber. We're getting 20 a minute out of it. Which is fine. These guys are making plastic. Slightly overclocked by the looks of things as well. Wow. Okay, what have we got over here? These guys just plastic too. I think they are. Okay. Yeah, it looks like that. Yeah, those conveyors are just... I, they was doing um, rubber at one point, but then I stopped it. Because we weren't making enough uh, plastic for all the other stuff we were making. Okay. So, let's think about this one then. So we need to do a similar thing that we did before. We'll uh, Let's delete this. Let's make ourselves a little smart splitter to put in front of here. Make sure it's facing the right way. In a situation like this, where you've got like a bit of like terrain that's like suddenly stopping you snapping, just find a bit where it does snap to the, the uh, foundation. You can hit the H key and then just click it into place like that. That should be perfect. And I'll just clip through the, the terrain a little bit, but as long as you're fine with that, I'm fine with that. So we'll get this guy set up. Ah, oh, too high. I do find it really tricky to tell when a conveyor lift is high enough and it's why is it such an annoying because look that line's appeared making you think like oh yeah it's in line but it's actually it needs to be there to be in line why is that's very odd yeah right so that's that done so yeah dimensional depot storage can be priority then we're going to output I'm not sure which direction. This big power line. <laughs> this is such a mess of power lines and stuff here, isn't it? Jesus. Um, so I think we'll output it, hopefully in this direction. We'll maybe be able to join these foundations here next to this cannon. And then where do I where do I start? I think we're going to just build a really big bridge. Go up in the air. Hmm, but I'm not sure where to put it without it looking quite goofy but oh, let's just do it here for now is that actually clipping through the power lines of course it is but you know what I can live with that we're going to live with it don't tell anyone Um. so now need well let's see if we do this in a specific way is this even the right location we'll make it work Come on. Up we go. Let's see. It's, hmm. Just trying to get a feel for it. So if we keep going straight up. It's going to be extremely tall. But I think it will be hilarious. So let's do it. Now. There we go. So we got, we've got a, what is this? 80 meter tall structure here. Nearly tall enough. Still not quite tall enough. <laughs> Unbelievably. But let's leave it like this. In fact, there we go. And I'm going to plop a conveyor hole. Mm. Yeah, I think that's fine. And then we're going to try and do the technique where we do an enormous conveyor lift. I 
Hopefully. All I need for that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We need to put a little bit of foundation there, I think, just to help us make sure that our conveyor is straight. But I think if we put him about, mm, I don't know, here, and then we try this, this should work now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can just see it. Come on, click again. So we go like that. That should be perfect. And then we just need to make sure that this is overflow. And we should start seeing our rubber moving. There he goes. Hey, do you know what I've never thought? Can you actually catch a ride on these lifts? I don't think you can. That'd be cool, though. Come on. Can you stand on these things? Oh, no, they just clipped through you. A little bit sad, but to be expected, to be fair. Right, um, this feels enormous. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get up it. That should help, though. Oh, boy. Don't look down, etc. Cool. So what I like to do is, also, is just delete this, because I don't mind having just this thing at the top like this. It looks all right, I think. Um, there we go. I've got our nice conveyor lift set up. We just need to, now, I'm going to use one meter, or maybe two meter would be better, actually. One meter is a little bit too skinny. I'm going to just build a huge bridge across this guy here. How does this fit in with our base once we arrive? Oh, we're not going to be quite tall enough to clear this, <laughs> to clear this miner. But that's all right. That's all right. We've got an absolutely enormous bridge. And we'll just, maybe we'll just do another, this is the point, we'll do another, this? Actually, wrong thing. Let's get a four meter one. Maybe five of those? Hopefully this is tall enough. Come on, we're in line with that, that. Oh, it looks like it's just about right. I can't quite tell. It's so annoying. We're going to have to just wing it. Come on. Zoop. Yeah, I just regret that he's not on the, uh, the world grid <laughs> at this point. So we can do this to sort of compensate for it, but it doesn't look great, does it? But... Wait a sec, we do that, and then that, and then I'll just start doing it this way. Hey, 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 no, what are you doing? There we go. That's, that's good enough for me. Oh, look at that, that's not too far offline. Okay, sorry, just had a phone call. I was just muting. Right, let's um do this. Oh, this is really out of line, isn't it? What the heck is going on here? Oh, we're slightly too tall as well. Very strange how things haven't quite lined up right. I'm not sure what's going on. This should do. Now we're in line. Now we can just bring our... Let's just do a giant conveyor belt. That looks so terrible. <laughs> I kind of love it. Um, I wonder if I can just at least connect this bit. Is it in the right place to connect to this cliff? Oh, it looks like it might. It's just a little bit too far out. That's all right. That's, um, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. We can make it work. give it a little bit more of a foundation like it's connected to something feels a bit more believable then doesn't it right let's get 
this conveyor belt made. And then we've got another quest item being built and created. We're doing real good. Real good. one thing I really dislike about this like this is another thing that really irks me is like if I get to this point where it's red don't let me press the button because you can press the button and now but I can't build it and if I cancel by pressing right mouse button it completely cancels the building whereas it should at least go back I think one step to where you get to move it again but anyway um we move Nearly there. Nearly there. This was a scenario where I thought to myself earlier on it would be quite handy to have had uh, drones. Because um, although it's probably a bit of a wait. Oh, wait, what's happened there? That's gone all wonky. But. Yeah, that's not quite what we're on, is Hang on. Yeah, but the drones would have been quite, it would have been quite just a nice a, a way to test the, the drones and show how they work. Um, but we're not even going to get to do those thinking on it because they're too far into the next phase. But, um, yeah, just a little distance with a, a silly little thing, it would have been perfect. Because the height is so crazy here. Nearly, nearly there, everyone. And hopefully I can now jimmy a little washed conveyor lift there. Perfect. Is our rubber en route? Can't quite tell. Why is it not coming out? Oh no, it is, it is. I can just see it. There he is. He is there. Why is it why is it changing my items? <laughs> it doesn't usually do that when you're in photo mode, but anyway. Okay. Let's see. So now we just need to connect this up, I think. We should be good. Why have we not got any Oh no, we have got some smart playing. They're just very slow. That's fine. Right, I'm gonna do this in the most basic way possible as well, I think. Why isn't that working? Too long? Oh, That's a bit sad, isn't it? So maybe we'll delete this. And maybe I can go... Oh god, it's coming in a strange direction. So we'll get it straight. And we'll do it alongside this one. Sort of like this. And you can just connect in there. Right, and that should be that. All sorted. Perfect. Okay. So let's just get some power hooked up to this guy. I think that's all we need now. And then we should be good to start going. Put some of those in just to help him off. Uh, where have we got a power line up here? There's one. Where's he going? To there. Has he got a spare? Oh, you've got a spare. Brilliant. Um, a bit janky, but we move. We're at that point, lads. It's getting jankier and jankier. But cool. Okay, that's going. Maybe we just uh, set up a couple of sinks real quick then, and then I think we'll call it quits for today. Because um, I don't want to start anything else too big. We just need to wait now for the production to sort of take over and get our quest items done. So, let's see. We wanted to get one done here. So, let's get a sink. Just plopped right about here, I think. Get him some power. Where is our power? Make sure you're painted correctly, of course. Make sure you're connected like so. Um, 
Um, and has this changed to be overflow? No, wait. Any undefined? No, we want overflow, please. So there we go. Hopefully, in not too long, we should see some of these getting created. We're just waiting for a bit more rubber. Where is the rubber? It's taking a long old time, isn't it? Maybe let's um well, let's just make sure it's actually coming. I don't want to just go ahead and put some in manually without knowing that we're safe. Oh god, it's going night time. We need the fog back on. Or else we're not gonna be able to see anything. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Rubber's coming. It's all good. It's all good. Alright, we'll trust that and leave that to it, to its own devices for now. Let's go and get uh we were going to create another sink over here for this stuff. Well, let's see how many of these have we managed to make so far. We must have a few. Way 30 already. That's not too shabby, is it? Excellent. Um, so let's see. So did we already set this up to be overflow? Oh, aren't we clever? We did. So if we just go to the back here, what I might do is stick it behind this box. Because if I look, if I think about it, it looks like, before we do that, we take this belt, we can bring him through here. Maybe, I would do this in a nice way. It's quite awkward sometimes when you're doing this right angle mode. Can I get him to come through this hole properly? I cannot. That's not what I want. Really what I want is, so it's going to go straight, oh, no, I don't want it to be high. I want it to go straight through here like this. Through there is where we're going to put it. So let's just connect these up. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. Then we'll get our awesome sink down. Connect it up like so. Oh, he just needs a little power as well. Let's not forget that. So that's this one set up too. So we'll start sinking those things straight away. And then we'll just set up one more little sink down here, guys. And then I think we're going to say goodnight for today. Um, where's this sink going to fit nicely? Let's think about this. So I think we're going to use this one to do it. At the moment, yeah, he's feeding in that way. So we want to say the right output will be our overflow. Maybe we'll just, I think it will fit just here. There's, I think he's a two by two. The awesome sink. Yeah. Lovely. So you can just go here. Nothing too fancy. Not a spare power line visible somewhere. Oh, there's one in here. It's this one. Come here. There we go. We'll get him coloured. Perfect. Right, so guys, it looks like everything is ticking along just fine. Um, should we check our power usage as well, actually? Have we got a normal power line here somewhere? Doesn't look like my new my favorite technique for that. I think we might have done this before. Is we just make a new power low, power pole here? Let's have a look. So it does look like our power is incredibly stable now, which is what we wanted. It's so great stuff. Great stuff. Um, I'm a bit wary to start anything new, so I think we are going to wrap up here. Let's go back up the top, and hopefully we can just see one of our uh, modular engines going to, trundling down the belt to finish. But yeah, good progress, everyone. Good progress. We smashed it. We're very nearly there, I think. I think next episode we're definitely going to be finishing this phase um, and wrapping up the Let's Play. Um, oh, it's a bit sad. It's a bit sad. But I do need to uh, try and actually work on that guide I keep talking about. Oh, wait, what's that? I think I see one. I think I see one. There it goes. Oi, 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 come here. What if we wait here? We should see him come down this lift any second. There he goes. How exciting. Modular engine number one, trundling off into the space elevator. 
But yeah, thanks everybody. I think we'll wrap up there for today. It's been cool hanging out. Thank you for keeping me company. And uh, yeah, take it easy. I will catch you very soon in the next one.